welcome to this week's Songs of Praise. Here in Lichfield Cathedral, I'm surrounded by choristers from all over the north of England and from Scotland who come together for this royal occasion. Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent with the Dean of Lichfield and the Lord Lieutenant of Staffordshire process through the nave of Lichfield Cathedral. The Duchess is with us for songs of praise as her first engagement in her new role as patron of the Choir Schools Association. In the congregation today are hundreds of children from the choir schools who've been gathering here at Lichfield to spend the day with songs of praise. Not all of them are choristers of course, but they and their teachers, parents and friends are joining us for a program which will celebrate the work of the schools in the beauty of music. So now, as the Duchess of Kent takes her place, the organ fills the cathedral with the introduction to our opening hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Like choristers all over the country, the boys here in Lichfield have practices before and after school nearly every day. We'll start with our scales. To R, not too loudly. The choir master is Jonathan Rhys Williams. He knows well what it means for the boys to be in the choir. It builds a deep commitment uh, within them a sense of discipline and of having to deliver the goods at a regular time, a regular occasion, and a sense of loyalty to a cause. They come to do one thing which has to be seen in terms of excellence. They have to strive for that excellence. It's a daily battle. If they win out and if the music really does come alive, and on many occasions it does, then it's an experience which for those people to have been there and taken part in is irreplaceable. There is a sense of innocence imparted uh, in the young boy's voice. Um, the clean line of a boy's voice perhaps matching the clean lines of a vast building in which they sing. The way the arches go up, their sound seems to soar in a way that is very attractive and evocative and uh, for centuries has won people's hearts.
at a quiet point during the day at Litchfield, I stole three choristers out of the cathedral. They told me about the commitment involved in being a chorister. We sing every day, an even song, two practices, and we also sing three services on Sunday, so it's very, very um, hectic, but it's enjoyable. And also, you have to stay behind at the end of turn sometimes. That's right, and um, we sing for Easter and Christmas. You don't get fed up with all that singing? No, no, it's great fun. Now, Hazel, you're from Edinburgh. What are the problems of being a girl in, in a choir? Well, obviously, a lot of choirs don't take girls because they think that they've different voices and their voices don't fit in with boys. But I don't think that's right. I think that girls' voices can, if they're trained in the same way, can sound exactly like boys' voices. Joseph, you're a probationer in Liverpool. What does it mean to be a probationer? Probationer means that you're just a beginner, beginning choir practice. So what sort of tests did you have to take to get into the choir? You have to know what notes are called and, and what staves are and how, how long you hold on notes for and once you have to sit still in the choir for five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. Is that difficult? No. Oh, great. <laughs> I would find that extre extremely difficult. Um, now, Andrew, you're a head chorister, so right. what does that great office bring with it? Well, mainly it means keeping the boys in order while the organist is away. And of course, head chorister also means leading the choir as well as um, looking after them. So despite all the hard work, is it worth it being a chorister? Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Well, it's time for you to rejoin your colleagues inside the cathedral. And they're going to sing for us a little anthem by Robert Herrick and Peter Herford. It's called The Litany to the Holy Spirit. Jackie Ray is a matron at the Cathedral School in Lincoln. Lincoln's a great place, especially when you live up here near the Cathedral. I love it. And living in a boarding house like this, which is obviously as old as the Cathedral, is wonderful too. The boys are a cross-section of society. They are professional people's sons, clergymen's sons, and ordinary people's sons. They've probably won a scholarship to be in the choir. and. Uh, if they don't sing, they play a musical instrument. They have a very good education. It's musically biased, of course but they get a general education. 
I think most of the boys are happy. One or two don't like coming because, of course, they're homesick. But I find Anyone they miss the dog more like than they miss Daddy. Anyone with something exciting? So far, another sort of road. Most of them like a little cuddle or a plaster or a pill or a, pe a potion of some kind. Definitely, they are budding hypochondriacs. And lunchtime, the matron goes across and checks them to see if they're clean for meals. I think you ought to dry those again on the back, they're wet still. Some of them eat, some of them don't. Most of the boarders have very hearty appetites, I'm glad to say. The washing is absolutely horrendous. There's everything to wash for the boys, apart from sheets and pillowcases. Thank you. I don't like the thought of the oldest leaving this year. I shall miss them very much because I've seen them for six years and watch them grow from funny little creatures who didn't know their left foot from their right, and now they're young men and quite advanced and mature. Amongst the hordes arriving at the cathedral for this Songs of Praise was Richard Shepherd. He's headmaster of York Minster School, but he's also chairman of the Choir Schools Association. You were a chorister yourself. What is it that people get out of being a chorister? Several things. First of all, they learn to do something to a professional standard at a very early age. Second, they have very little spare time, so they learn to organise what little time they have very well. And third, they are members of a team and they are all acting corporately uh, towards one goal, which is the worship in the church. Richard, tell me about the range of choir schools. Well, there's an enormous range uh, from Westminster, which has just choristers, through to two maintained schools, which uh, are Saddle and Peterborough, which go right through to 18, some prep schools up to the age of 13, some senior independent schools, a lot. And of course, um, some are co-educational, some are single sex, and some, like Edinburgh, actually have girls in the choir. I feel that uh, it would be very good for girls to have this sort of education, which might mean second choirs in various cathedrals. Um, there's a question of money, and there's a question of uh, having the initiative and the will to do it. You've written a piece of music especially for this program. Tell me about it. Yes, Brian Morris wrote the words, and they are a sort of modern version of the canticle, O All Ye Works of the Lord, Praise Ye the Lord. Uh, we wrote it about two or three weeks ago, and the idea is it should be a jolly hymn of praise in three sections, so the choristers have two sections to sing, and the other children, who are not choristers, sing the chorus.
Well, here in Wakefield, I've been joined by Robert Wheatley, who's just left the Cathedral Choir after three years because his voice is broken. Robert, how did you get involved in the choir in the first place? Well, when I was about nine, I went to Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School on Northgate. Um, I became friendly with many boys, and a few of them came to the choir here. They'd said I got a good voice, so I thought I'd come down and have a look, see if I could have a go. Was it what you expected? No. Sometimes your friends are all playing out after you've been to practice, and they say, do you want to come out? And say, sorry, I can't, but I've got to do my homework. <laughs> and they're all thinking, I shouldn't have gone to choir, what a bore. But it's all right, really. Well, Robert, why don't we go inside the cathedral now and meet the bishop? Yeah. David, hello. Hello. You're now Bishop yeah. of Wakefield, but actually it all started for you here in Wakefield in this very pew. As far as the choir is concerned, right here, yes. Uh, I think I spent something like three to four months as a probationer, chorister here, watched over by the presenter behind, keeping a close eye on us. Then when we'd done the stint here, we moved across into the uh, choir stalls here, remaining on what they call uh, Cantori's side. And I finished up, spent most of my years in the cathedral choir in this very place. So, Robert, was this your side of the cathedral? No, I was a decaying boy over there. Were they better than you, Bishop? That oh, side definitely there. not. Definitely not. We were always much better than them. Yeah. Let's go across now to the cathedral. Shall right. We? Well, it only took us a few seconds to cross the choir. In reality, it took you a little longer than that. But looking back now, nostalgic feelings? Yeah, there's quite a number of uh, nostalgic feelings. I mean, we started off here myself and my sister and family worshipping and then came into the choir and served later. I mean, you know, real number of connections with this cathedral over a long period of time. And what about the truth of what goes on in the choir? As a, <laughs> as a bishop, you can tell all that, can't you? <laughs> well, I remember, yes, one or two things. I, I mean, the, the then provost ran quite a, a tight ship. And I can remember once uh, after a rehearsal on a Thursday night, going with a friend of mine and eating, getting some fish and chips and being told that it wasn't quite the done thing for cathedral choir boys to eat fish and chips in the street in Wakefield. And um, in Lent, we used to get some really rather long and somewhat tedious sermons. And uh, we diverted ourselves by playing a, a, a form of choir boys cricket. How did you manage to get away with it, though? Well, on the whole, we did manage to get away with it if it was kept fairly quiet. If it got a bit noisy and people got a bit excited, the verger came stalking up and you had to appear in, by the provost vestry later on that day, and you might be in threatened of, by the cane. You don't get the cane these days, do you? No. No, we are. Do you, do you ever spot such things going on these days? I try to keep my eyes uh, on my stall and don't look too far down there, yes. Did you ever, sitting across there, look across here and think, hmm, one day that could be me? Not really, no. I mean, and, and when I actually came here and sat here for the first time, I mean, it was a very strange experience coming up through the choir into the place where I, and past the place where I'd once sang in the choir. I mean, it was really quite moving in many ways, and get all sorts of thoughts and feelings crowding in on you.
Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent, is patron of the Choir Schools Association. So I've come here to St. James's Palace in London to hear from the Duchess of her impressions of that splendid day in Lichfield. Arriving, I think, for the first time at Lichfield Cathedral and seeing it in all its glory. And I shall never forget the, the beautiful precincts around it, the green grass and the summer flowers just starting. And this mass of choristers walking all over the grass happy faces, longing to start enjoying the occasion. How important for you is the beauty of music and worship? It plays a very important part. We're now in Lichfield Cathedral, built in Saxon times, and man has worshipped there since time immemorial, and music has played its part since then. You play the organ yourself. What is that like in, in a beautiful space, in a wonderful environment? What does that feel like for you? It's very hard to describe. When you first play an organ in a great cathedral, you feel very humble and very small that you can actually make this unique instrument, you can make this great cathedral practically shake. I think that the combination of the organ, the choristers, and the ambiance we're in, in church, inspires us to worship. What was it that led you to take on the role of patron of the association? Of course, every major cathedral has its choir school. And numbers are running down a little. And I've often wondered if parents of talented children know about these schools attached to the cathedrals. I have a tremendous love of choral music and church music in particular. So it didn't take me long to make a decision when I was very kindly asked to become patron. merciful God, whose works are great beyond our understanding. Look mercifully upon us, we beseech thee, as we endeavor to praise thee, whom no man can worthily praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and evermore.